I'm going to make a back plane, which is uh, something I'll explain later. You know, generally, I just make a bunch of crap that say, hey, look at this junk that I made. And you say, hey, blue dart, how do you use this? And I say, shut up. I don't know. I do know. I just don't want to go into it right now. And this is an 8K RAM module. It actually goes on the back plane. Okay, so I need uh, some more copper wiring here. Fine copper wire. You know, it looks like an Oreo. Give me a minute here. I wonder if you could eat it. You can't eat it. You can't can it either. It's a shame. It looks like an Oreo. Good lord. This is on a higher res texture pack. Seriously, if it looks like an Oreo on a high res texture pack, I mean, little 16 by 16 textures would probably make it look more like an Oreo than that. So if you take four Oreos, four iron bars, that's not right. Four Oreos, four iron bars, and iron ingot. You can make copper coils, which I need two of these suckers. So I'm gonna go ahead and make myself a nice blue electric motor. And uh, I'll be using more of these things later, but for now, with this just need the one. Just need one to make this disk drive. And then, you, you won't believe this, but this computer actually, it won't run. It won't just magically run. Like, you know, computers nowadays that are, like, baby-proof. Anybody can just, you know, say, oh, look at this, I'm on the newest version of Windows 12 or whatever it is. You actually have to make a disk and then make a boot disk. I know, it's crazy. And then you have to write the language. No, you don't have to write the language, okay? There's a very inefficient stack-based language there already for you that you can use, and it works well within the parameters of the game. I mean, can you imagine if they had put in a full object-oriented language in here inside Red Power? That'd be weird. I mean, I guess you could go get computer craft, but... Uh, don't do it. I don't know. You could do it if you want. Definitely easier to use, but you know, stack-based languages to keep you on your toes, because they're, uh, you know, they're confusing as crap, so, you know, whatever. Their inefficiency brings out the best in the programmer. I actually have one more thing I have to make for this. It's annoying as crap, too. Really, I'm going to need to find the source of wool. Maybe I should go mistcraft worlding before I do anything else. Take a short sabbatical. So I'm going to take these red alloy ingots and make them into white insulated wire. Insulated wiring has some interesting properties that I may go into later. But for right now, I just need to rage them like so, a little cross pattern, a little string, and get myself some bundled cable, which I'm going to have to make a bunch of this junk, but for now, I just need one. Arrange it like so, ribbon cable, red dove wafer, bundle cable, wooden blanks, to get an IO expander. This little bugger will actually enable me to use the bundled cable. It's going to be relatively complicated. I'm going to need a bunch more wool, some of the dye I need. I'm going to use uh, bone meal, orange dye, and magenta dye, if I can handle it. Okay, so these little things are super complicated, and you're going to have to wait for next episode for me to use them. And I might have to go gather some wool first, so we'll see what I end up doing, but... Uh, Finishing this build, getting that thing, you know, crushing monsters for me automatically is, is very high on my list. So I'm going to do that and, uh, you know, I'm going to program this darn thing. Show you some of it, but I'm not going to bore you with, oh, look, you got to type this. No, that's boring as crap watching other people program. I mean, who would do that to someone else? You would have to be a jerk. Okay, don't make other people watch you program. Just don't. Okay, so thanks for watching this episode and uh, stay tuned. It looks like an Oreo. Good lord. Psych. D I mean, did you really think I was going to end the episode after four minutes? Four minutes? That No, I'm not going to do that. There's more stuff to do. And I'll get to the computer stuff in a minute, but for now, check this out. I've got this uh, mass fabricator bumping out all its UU matter into this chest. So, you know, I don't have to babysit it. This is MFSU. It's getting close to full. Running some deuterium here in this fusion reactor. And I come over here and I repurpose the second isotopic separator to make deuterium. So they're both making deuterium because I don't have any more clay. This wall over here is open for a reason. Because I want to find a way to tell this thing to only run when this MFSU over here is full. But I don't want it to look crazy ugly. So I'm going to make something that I've not made yet. Three of them actually. 
CF sprayer. So I'm also going to make a CF backpack out of fuel cans, which if you remember are a bunch of tin, tin electronic circuit, and the two CF sprayers. It's made a backpack. Now you want to wear this on your back, you know, just like all the other junk, and it looks kind of like the backpack. And you can see it already has some charge in it when you make it. And what you do is uh, the CF sprayer can be, you know, powered by the CF backpack. Now you may say, what's this CF nonsense? Well, CF stands for Charles Forbley, the inventor of CF backpack, okay? Now what it does is when you right-click on any random thing, it gets a bunch of random Charles blocks right here, and their only real purpose is for you to punch them. Okay, so full disclosure, CF does not stand for Charles Forbley. It uh, actually stands for Construction Foam. And you notice when I right click to place a bunch of this foam here, and you could just punch it and it'll go away instantly. Or, over time, as you can see, it turns into this hardened stone. You could break it, but the nice thing about this stone is it is crazy blast resistant, okay? I mean, it's not quite obsidian, it's not quite reinforced stone, but it's, uh, it's pretty darn good. I mean, it'll withstand creeper explosions. Uh, just to show you how cool this stuff is, you can actually paint it with the Industrial Craft Painters. Look at that, yellow, blue, any of the colors that you want. So you can make up a nice house or a wall of this, maybe do some pixel art. I do kind of like making structures out of this, but I, I didn't bother to make this stuff yet. And you know, you see, you can't get it back no matter what. And if you really want, you can place down scaffolding, like a special formation, and just right click. And you see what it did? It put it all in the scaffolding, and then gave me the scaffolding back. But here's something weird I just accidentally found out. Apparently you can bounce items across it. Boingy. That's fun. It's too bad this stuff hardens eventually. You can just bounce stuff around it. They didn't tell me that on the wiki. Boingy, boingy, boingy. <laughs> that never gets old. And if you want this stuff to harden instantly, you can just take a piece of sand and just right click. And boom. Instantly hardened. And took one piece of sand. But I don't want this junk in here. Its true purpose is out here. Now there's something interesting you can do with industrial craft cables. And doing so also preserves the cable itself. I can right click and boom. Start drowning. Great. Not only do you start drowning because you forget your Everton amulet, this construction foam is now on the cable. And the squid is appearing on me. Get, get away. And I'm gonna do that same thing over here. And look at that, it just push, puts a bunch of it everywhere. Yeah, unfortunately, when you put it on the cables, you can't really specify the exact location. You just kinda have to use it, and then it goes poof. Oh, look at this piece that I didn't want over here already hardened. This is ridiculous. Oh, look! The squid uh, insect just bounces it up and down. Boingy, 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 boingy. So we'll just clear the pieces we don't want up here. And now you'll see that all the cable is enveloped by this construction foam. And the nice thing about that, is after I, you know, harden some of it here, the cable will still function as if it were just a cable and not construction foam. Check it out. See? Still connected. So for aesthetic purposes, that's pretty nice. Although, I actually have something I'm going to do with this. I'm going to come out here and hook up some wiring. Now, I want to know if I can put a wireless transmitter here. Hey, look at that! I can! So let's make a frequency. Let's see. I may or may not use this again. I'm going to call it MFSU Full. Now I'm going to put this down here. The receiver mystically, you know, pushes away the water, and that could just kind of exist in it. You know, I've noticed something. The more mods you have, the worse Minecraft's mechanics get all messed up. I mean, just, just, just the physical laws seem to have very little bearing on some of these mods. Especially when you combine them. Anyway, put this here, and I have prepared a vanilla repeater for this purpose, and you are not being nice to me, and now it's gone. I keep losing things when I put them in the water. Where did they go? Well, it looks like it sank to Davy Jones' locker. Which is a crying shame, because for the life of me, I cannot remember his locker combination. 
Alright, so I'm just gonna make up a red power repeater. Had to look it up, you know. That's what NEI is for, okay? Look it up recipes that are lame. Okay, come on, work. Yes! Red power for the win! Connect that. So now, in theory, because the repeater will push the signal through the block, this thing will get it. Now, if we take this off, it'll start going, because this is set to... What's it set to? Emit if full? Emit if partially failed. Well, then I just have to connect it right here. Come on, what are you doing? I'm shift pressing. Okay, let's do one of these. And I just need to put this on here. Come on. There you go. Perfect. Now it's touching it. Aha, and the mass fabricator has ceased. Which means when this thing fills up, it will go. So what's gonna happen is when this thing gets full, it'll toggle between full and almost full, and this thing will just use, you know, the top bit of energy it has, and it'll refill it, and it'll use it, so it'll function slowly, but it should still function, and then use up scrap. So that's great. Now I don't even have to watch this thing. I just need to get this thing to produce as much energy as possible. So in the future, I'm gonna do some more stuff to get energy in here. Because the more energy I get, the more UU matter I'll be able to get passively to make more junk. So if we come over here, you notice there's significantly less cobble in this chest. Came down here and I actually bumped down the timer, because it was just always overflowing and it just seemed like a waste. Came over here, I bumped the timer down to two seconds. I guess that's not quite enough. Let's make it like 1.5. See if that does it. But you know, uh, three quarters of a second was clearly too much cobble. Now, in a like vein, I came back here and I put this timer that runs my, you know, my machines, my macerator and furnace. I switched it from 0.5 seconds to 10 seconds. And I believe this should be fine. It'll slow down, you know, the process of smelting by a bit, but um, I don't do it that often anyway, so I really didn't want it always running. And there's one other timer down right here for this sorting chest. I popped up to 7.5 seconds instead of like 2. I don't need it to sort that quickly, it just became a problem. So if you're counting, that's actually three, and that's the only three timers I have on this map. So now they're up to, you know, significantly higher, lowest one being at uh, one and a half seconds. And that one does get turned off if I turn off my cobble gen. Now over here in my relay, I found that, uh, you know, this thing, it's, it's filling up. I came over here periodically to drain it by grabbing out some red matter and uh, dark matter and put it in this chest. So yeah, that's a decent amount of junk, and uh, at some point I'll, I can use this for something. It's... I don't know, I don't want to use it for something too cheap, but uh, I might make a mercurial eye in a bit in the future. But I'm not going to make it now because I don't have any bricks. And this chest right over here just has my uh, rocket science tools in it because uh, I want to keep them out of my inventory because I have a feeling I might have to ditch rocket science in a bit here. I want to update all my mods and rocket science is the only one holding me back at this point from the newest version of forestry and equivalent exchange and all that good junk. And before I get to my, you know, new build, I made a change back here. I've also made this terminus module handle seeds and saplings because they have been overflowing in that chest into my default route for some time now because I turned my tree farm back on because I have been using up a good amount of my wood to, you know, make bookshelves here automatically. So I figured I'd turn the tree farm back on and now there are more saplings and seeds are just building up. So right here I have saplings, eight of them turned into two plant balls. Now the important thing to note is yes, I am using my saplings first and foremost for one, the tree farm itself, first priority. Two, my two fermenters are always to keep a few saplings stocked. And also, they'll only come down here if that chest up there is full of saplings. Now, the same thing for seeds. Seeds are also in that chest. If I come down here, oh no, I've got seeds are also turned into plant balls. So I'm making plant balls from all the excess farm produce that I would have just been wasting anyway. So, you know, maybe not the most efficient thing to make with these, but it is something. And it allows me to keep my farms on indefinitely. So I should be building up a decent amount of plant balls here. 
which is a good thing to keep in mind, because I've got a plan for them in the future. As you can see, I have some sort of weird problem where it occasionally throws seeds and saplings out of this chest. I think I know how to fix that, but um, I think I'll put that on hold. It's sort of giant issue. And you can see the peat bog's going as well. And uh, I ran out of space in this chest, but I decided to crate down 36 stacks of ash so that I could resume my peat gathering. And you know Ash, she's always so ambitious, you know, gotta crate them all. Now, I've got 56 additional UU matter I set aside, and I've been itching to use this junk. So let's make 8 iridium ore, combine that ore with alloys and diamonds to get iridium plates. Now, before I upgrade these nano suit boots, I actually have to make rubber boots out of rubber and wool. I need two of these. If I take the nano suit boots, the two iridium plates, two pairs of rubber boots that I just made, and a lapatron crystal, I get the quantum suit boots. Yeah, yo. Sorry, mass fabricator. I gotta charge these. Well, I'm mad at my quantum suit leggings are a little low. There we go. All charged and happy. Let's just equip them. Now I have two pieces of the quantum suit. Not bad. And the quantum suit boots allow you to jump very high. Whee! I could jump! And it also lowers the fall damage you take by a very significant amount. So I can jump really high at fall and it doesn't care. Still play the animation for a bit, but whatever. Ooh, crunch. Still crunched a bit. But it lowers it very significantly. To be continued. Charles in charge of our clicks, left and right. Charles in charge of every block inside. I want, I want Charles in charge of me.